So we're off for our daily walk. We're going up to the forest, so I'm going to take you up to a native New Zealand forest. So today is Thursday, October the 11th, and uh, Zef left us on Monday, October the 8th. So we're into our third full day without him, and it's just it's pretty painful. I suppose, I guess I could tell you that we've accepted it a little bit, but it's really, really difficult. They like your baby. Well, they are your babies. So Jaja's on a very strict weight reduction. It's really hard to get her to lose weight. Very motivated by food. We really shouldn't walk here because there are lots of grasses, spring grasses. And uh, she, like a lot of English pointers, gets skin conditions. And so she gets very itchy. So we bathe her in neem soap, neem spray. We've tried lots of different things in our time. This is our property, by the way. This is in the North Island of New Zealand. And uh, what we do is we go up here to the native forest about three times a day. So we have a, a slight incline up here. It's not too difficult. But the dogs, Seth used to love coming up here. The dogs have always been big walkers. So yeah, we've had three nights now without Zeph and it's just, it's dreadful. You know, you look for him, you think he's right behind you, but he's not. I'm not sure how Zsa Zsa's actually getting on, to be honest. Here is a bit of a view. It's a cloudy, rainy day today. So this is our property here, all of this. So she's wondering if she can go over the... She tends to do it herself, goes over that line, which we keep down on the grass so that she can just go through. Okay, you're going to go through. Okay. You want me to go through first? Do you follow me? So we go over the line. And we're coming in to our forest. So we have this native forest on our property. In fact we've got two forests. The other one is down the bottom of the property so past that bank of trees that you see there is where we're building our house. At the moment we're living here in the shed. You can just see a car there. And um, the other forest isn't quite as good as this one. There's a nasty thistle that we've got to get rid of. Oh, I think she spotted something. Lots of rabbits are here and also pheasant. So she's, she's seen something. So yes, I'm not, not really sure how she's getting on, to be honest. Um, at times she seems to be looking for him, looking for Zef, because they were together for eight years, well, seven and a half, because she's four months younger. And uh, yeah, at times I think she's looking for him and at times I look at her and she seems a little sad. She's looking sad. But that could be because she's being restricted on her food. And she's always been such a, a dog motivated by food. Well, I mean, all dogs are, aren't they? But, um, yeah. It could be that she's a bit sad because of that. She seems to be enjoying the company, though, because Zef was such a dominant boy. And he was so... Um, the uh, ground here is a bit rough, so I'm huffing and puffing because I've got to kind of video and watch my step at the same time. So, yeah, he was such a, here's our forest, such a dominant, dominant boy, in a, in a good way. You know, he was a wonderful, vibrant personality. He was always happy. He was always barking. He was gentle. He was loving and affectionate. I know that we all say this about our dogs, but he was the very best dog you could ever have. And she's the very best girl dog you could ever have. And uh, there she goes in the forest. And because he was so lively and he'd run around a lot and he'd bark, we've got a farmer who lives behind us and he comes through, we allow him to come through our property once or twice a week with his sheep. He goes to his other property, which is down the road. Look at this beautiful forest. This is, as far as I know, this is Totara. 
totara trees. Normally we've got tui birds in here. You might hear them singing, but um, I can't hear them at the moment. Yeah, so the farmer comes through maybe once or twice a week and Zef would always run after him like a lunatic. And in fact, that's what he was doing on the day he died. He was running after him and then he came into our shed in the living area and literally collapsed and died. So, you know, we know he had, well, we don't know, but we realise now he had a bit of a heart problem. Oh, she's seen something. She's running in the distance. I'd say that's a pheasant that she's after. Oh, yeah, she's running. You may not be able to see it at this distance. She's caught the scent. I know that there's a pheasant that lives there. Yeah, so he was always the one that was barking and running around and being so quirky and being very vocal, demanding attention. And she was always a little bit more submissive. She, you know, he was the dominant one, the male pointer. And so now it's a different dynamic because she is the only dog, the lone dog. She's disappeared behind those, those built up stones. So now that she's the lone dog, I think she is enjoying the full on attention. We always tried to um, give as much attention to both dogs as possible. They did everything together. They went in the car with us. We would go on walks together. So she's always had attention, but now she's got full on attention. Oh, there she is. Hi, what you found? Pheasant? Pheasant? That's where the pheasant lives over there. So normally here, this is a creek, but it's dried up at the moment. The creek flows all the way down there. And this is all the beautiful native forest so we are in where are we now we're in spring here in new zealand it's october the what did i say the 11th uh, and we don't start summer until december the first here in the southern hemisphere yeah so she i don't know how she's getting on she um when we took him to the vet in the back of our car to confirm that he had died he we, we already knew he he passed she was next to him and she didn't, I don't know whether she knew or not. I really don't know. I know a lot of you listening to this will say, well, of course she knew. And she probably did. I, don't, I really don't know because she hasn't, she hasn't really shown signs of being too, too upset. But then again, she does. It's, it's just really odd because she does look for him and she does kind of look, um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a way to get across here because this is very muddy. And I've been stuck in this many times, up to my, oh, almost up to my knees at one point. So yeah, I'm trying to um, keep her as active as possible, there she is, to, to promote the weight loss and to just to keep her happy. Both of us love walking, I've walked all my life and spend a lot of time during the day walking. I probably walk up to two hours a day, maybe more. I'm, I'm not talking power walking, <laughs> just talking a gentle walk. But on this property, it's not so gentle because we've got steep slopes and walking in this forest isn't always easy, particularly when it's raining as it is today because it can get a bit muddy. So, but it's only light rain at the moment, so I'll just figure out how I get across. Probably just here. And then we can go and see what she's doing. So this over here, so normally this would be quite a rushing stream all the way down 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 but at the moment it is it is dry there we are what you found you on the scent you on the scent of a pheasant normally pheasants live here just somewhere near that that tree oh you found a scent yeah so it's just a beautiful forest and I'm very glad that Zef came up here last week for what turned out to be the very last time he um in the last few months, now that I've been thinking over the last couple of days, I've realised that he wasn't as active as he had been. Probably, if I think about it, maybe the last six months, he kind of slowed down. And so he just loved, his favourite thing to do was sit on his pet bed in the sun, just outside our shed, and just, he loved it. <laughs> She's found something. And uh, I tried to get him to come for walks, but sometimes he just didn't want to. 
and I, I'm not one to drag dogs by the, you know, put them on a leash and drag them off. But he would come, he would come with me, uh, you know, maybe twice a day. And uh, particularly up the long driveway, I haven't done a video of that yet, but we've got a tremendously long driveway which you can come up, and it's a very good walk. And uh, he found that a little hard, I think, in the last couple of months, now that I think about it. She's a lot more active, and she's a lot more, a little bit more curious than he ever was. As a male pointer, he was always the one to just run around, <laughs> like a bit of a lunatic. Oh, itchy, itchy, itchy. And he would just run, and run, and he'd run after anything that would move. And she was always a little bit more curious, a little bit more explorative as she is now. Lots of rabbits tend to live here in this forest. Ooh, got a raindrop on my head. And um, yeah, so the last, now that I look back on it, I, I think, you know, when a pet dies, the first couple of days are just appalling. And you just feel, uh, I've never been depressed in my life, really. But I can understand depression to some extent, not that deep deep dreadful depression that darkness that people apparently descend into but today for example I'm not feeling really great yesterday oh, lost myself now I've got to get over this way because I'll get stuck yesterday I was a little bit more accepting I think by yesterday afternoon putting up all the videos on this channel putting music to them and just seeing his life and her life it's been well it's made it a little easier and I thought yesterday afternoon I thought I'd kind of come to terms with it I'd accepted it but today which is Thursday as I said and he died on Monday it's it's crap today I'm really missing him bursting into tears anytime I see his photo I know it's all natural this is all the, the stages of grief I've been angry that he died uh, trying to blame anybody <laughs> not sure who but there she is anybody I could blame um, I tried to uh, Yesterday I just kind of tried to make it as logical as possible that he had a good life and that he was a happy dog and that's what I'm going to try to cling to. My husband, we've decided that we're going to refer to the place where he's buried and I'll show you that in a video, not now, but maybe in a few months. We've decided that we're just going to call that Zeph's Forest because he is, we put him, buried him under a tree in the other forest. And it's a lovely, quiet resting place with a family of Tui, native New Zealand birds, in that tree. And we've decided that we're just going to refer to him as sleeping, that we can't bear to use the word that he's, you know, that's his grave. We're just going to refer to him as sleeping, and that has helped a little bit to think that way. And so now we're just trying to help her get through it. But as I say, sometimes she seems okay, and then the next time I look at her and I think, oh, she's really upset or depressed or lost, but that's possibly me projecting my thoughts onto her. What you found? Is there a rabbit in there? Should we come for a closer look? Yeah. Oh, what you found? Uh, because we're here on, um, on our own property, you'll see that she doesn't wear a collar. The dogs never wore collars. Well. No, I stand corrected. They did in the first place when we arrived here. We had um, collars on them just so that they could establish where their boundary fence was. And then once they understood, because English pointers are extremely intelligent dogs, once they understood that, they could then just roam at leisure. And we don't have um, any collars. When they go out with us, uh, well, <laughs> only her now, now she comes out with us in the car, we, um, we have a leash so that if we take her, if we go for a cup of coffee, and we're going to take her with us, then she can just come on the leash. But other than that, she doesn't wear a collar at all. Do you, little lamb? There you go. Where are you off to? You having fun? You having fun? There's so many things to sniff and explore here and so many birds to listen to. It's a wonderful place. I'm coming up here a lot with her because not only is it great exercise, it's a great place for me to just spend time to reflect on what's happened and to just grieve and to mourn Zeph's passing. I look now and I just think that he should be in the camera somewhere, that he should be just running past and, and I see them together all the time, but not the way it is now. So when you lose a pet, you have to adjust to this different lifestyle that's really, really hard. And of course, it's the same when someone dies. It's not just for pets, it's for humans as well. And I, I don't really know. I'm trying not to talk about it with too many people because I find that, what can people say? They say, look, I'm dreadfully sorry for your loss. 
you know, he's gone over the Rainbow Bridge, all that kind of stuff, and it's very comforting. But, you know, it's stuff that you also know yourself. Oh, you're balancing on those stones. Good girl. Ah, oh, I think there's a rabbit in there, isn't there? We're going to be here for three hours while you just stare at them. Should we try and come over and see? We've just got to navigate all the stones. So yes, I'm trying not to talk to too many people and just spend time with her and and my husband's dealing with it very differently. I find doing all the, whoop, doing all the videos and putting them on the channel is very, very cathartic. He can't bear to look at a photo of Seth at the moment. What do we see? I don't think we can see anything. And you know, we all grieve in different ways and that's, that's fine. Um, I just, for me, I just have to do all the videos and put music to it and celebrate his life. And with her, I think this is what we're just doing is is just taking each day as it comes and um, just trying to give her the best possible time. I now, well we both look at her now and think, oh my god, how much longer do we have with her? She is from a different bloodline. I said in a previous video that Seth was from a line that uh, wasn't wasn't um well didn't have dogs that lasted a long time his brother full brother died at the age of two and his dad i have been trying to think I, th I think his dad made it to just 10 or maybe just nine i really don't remember and zeph as as we know is the day after his eighth birthday so yeah i don't think he came from the greatest of lines and her line is different she's from an australian line of english pointers and uh, not the English line that Zeph was from. And so she's always seemed a little bit more robust. Zeph was always a little bit fragile. Not that he was sick or anything like that, but he wasn't quite as tough as she is. You know, here she is exploring rocks. He kind of didn't want to get his paws <laughs> into the rocks, get his paws dirty and muddy. So he was a very different kind of personality. So we're hoping, we're just not thinking about it. And I think that's the best thing to do is just give her the best possible life that she can have now. Uh, she was in her crate last night, um, the night before she did sleep with us, but last night she was okay. She went into the crate, um, which is next to Zeph's. We're not dismantling his crate just now. We're not putting his blankets away. We're not doing anything. We're just holding fast and just waiting and seeing what happens. So, okay, I will do another video later. We'll um, chronicle how we're going. Look at that beautiful girl. Hey, Sharj, there are rabbits in there, aren't there? We're going to be here for five hours while you stare at rabbits and try to get them out. I don't think they're coming out. They'll know that you're there, and this is an awfully big pile of rocks. <laughs> I don't think, look at that, all those rocks. I don't think those rabbits are coming out, sweetheart. <laughs> you're going to try. Oh dear. Okay, well, we're going to be here for some time. I'll leave it here and I'll do another video in another few days and let you know how we're getting on.